Well, in 2013, you got injured, you popped a disc in your back, and then you decided to retire. And that lasted for about a year until 2014 when you decided to go on the Combat Jack, on the Combat Jack podcast. Uh, rest in peace, by the way, Combat Jack. I knew him, uh, you know, for a while, actually, before he passed. Uh, so definitely sad news that he passed away. But you decided to go on this podcast and essentially tell your whole story because all of these years, like your life and the Supreme Team and everything else was completely secret and hidden. And now you decide to actually let all that out there. And um, the reaction to that was not so good when it, came, when it comes to the NYPD. <laughs> There's never no good reaction with me and the NYPD. So going on with the backside of the Combat Jack is, and God bless my lawyer, Ed Woods, who you probably knew also, Ed Woods, a uh, big entertainment attorney, we was trying to get a book deal for like a year and a half. I was trying to get a book deal, couldn't get a book deal. And so Combat Jack at the time had the number one hip hop podcast in the country. And I said, listen, if we go on Combat Jack and I jump off the roof and tell everything, I'm going to get a deal. I just didn't know that I was going to be on the front page of a New York tabloid and ran a story on me for five days. And every national organization, all the news networks was talking about this thug cop, which they labeled me as a thug cop, which was definitely off base because I used to be a thug and then I was a cop. So I never was a thug cop at one time. But it was all good. What people don't know, the other backside to this, Vlad, is while the NYPD and all the news media, conservative media is beating me up, I'm with my book agent. I signed with a book agent the day that the, the newspaper came out. The, a week later, I'm sitting in a room with Simon & Schuster, Random House, Doubleday, Judith Regan, the top 10 publishers in the world is bidding on my story because of that newspaper article. Right, and um, that article really just kind of took on a life of its own. Um, I guess one of your old friends, David McClary, spoke about you, uh, claimed that you were just a con man looking for another hustle. Yeah, so, you know, when I was on Combat Jack, I kind of alluded to the fact that I knew one of the, the guys who allegedly was involved with the, the, the you know, the Ed Burns. Homicide. Again, I wasn't there. Uh, I had no contact with anybody. And uh, that took a life of its own because that's why they did the story that the cop, then they reached out to him in prison. And he said, I don't even know who this guy is or whatever. But I, I wasn't even mad at that. I mean, listen, you know, this guy's going up for parole or whatever it is. I was just speaking. Maybe I shouldn't have talked about it. Um, but I grew up in an area where there was gangsters, pimps and hustlers. So I knew that most ironic thing is, again, now this, I, I knew other people who shot cops. You know, it, it, it just so happened that that situation was like taboo for police. And it's probably the most infamous police homicide in history of policing in the entire country. But um, I had nothing to do with it. And I was just speaking on relationships that I had growing up in combat. Jack was asking the questions. And I alluded to the fact that I might have known, you know, that I grew up with one of the guys that I knew. You know, it is what it is. 